Hi, my name is Troy Jacobson. Welcome to this special feature of our Swimmerville's DVD on proper stroke technique for the freestyle swim stroke. With me today is professional swim coach David Amato. David, thanks so much for joining me. Hi, Troy. Glad to be here. Yeah, so, okay. Freestyle technique, it's fairly complicated, but we're going to try to simplify it for our viewers. Talk about or give us a brief overview of proper technique for the freestyle stroke. Okay, Troy, a brief overview. You'd want to look at three things when you look at your body position and consider a couple things when you look at the big propulsive part of the stroke, which is the arm pull. First, with the body position, you're looking at your head position, your hips, and what your feet are doing. Those three things will dominate the body position. What we're looking for in the head is a nice neutral, just like we're standing here. It's very, very streamlined, very comfortable. With the hips, we want to see a roll up to about 45 degrees when we look at the swimmer. That means in relation to the bottom of the pool. With the feet, we'd like to keep those tight, meaning they're not going to ever come apart more than about a foot or so. Now those three overall things are going to dominate your body position. We want balance for an aft, the head and the feet, and we want the, the hips to roll. Then we're going to look at the arms. For streamlining in the arm pole, I'd like to bring in Valerie. Hi Valerie. Thanks for coming out. Thanks. Okay. What I'd like to show you, Troy, is the arm position. If I can get her to assume the swimming position. What we're looking at in this overall streamlining position with her hand about six to eight inches under the surface, lined up with her left shoulder and left hand. Okay. This is going to dominate that. We want the hand to enter smoothly and have a nice reach, as we call it, in the swim stroke. Overall, when she's swimming, we're gonna look for a high elbow position, and if she rolls through, notice she gets that reach, but her elbows are always gonna be higher than her hands. Okay, thanks a lot, Valerie. So we talked a little bit about hand position. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that body position and the hip roll. I know that's very important in freestyle technique. Why is that? Hip roll, what we're looking for is about 45 degrees of hip roll. That's in relation to the bottom of the pool. That's gonna make sure that your body is swimming like a speedboat, as opposed to, say, a barge. Barges have a nice, flat surface. They're not known for their speed. Speedboats are gonna go way faster. Your body, when your hips are perpendicular, is a lot more streamlined. Okay. When you are swimming and you're staying flat with the hips in relation to the bottom of the pool, that's like a barge. That's gonna to be too, too much drag. So to roll 45 degrees is just about right for what we're looking for for our stroke turnover rate. Okay. All right, well, high elbow. You know, you hear coaches all the time saying, high elbow, high elbow. What exactly does that mean, especially when it comes to the recovery phase of the freestyle? Coach? Right. The high elbow, that's gonna make sure that our arm is clearing the water surface but we don't want to extend our hand out. That's going to throw off your body position and the weight. We're taking that shortest route possible from the back to the front of the stroke, and that's what we look for. So that's a high elbow over the water, and high elbow under the water means that we're going to adopt that high elbow position, because really after you get that, that reach that Valerie showed us about, what you want to do is get those fingertips pointed towards the bottom and pull straight through and take good full stroke cycles. Okay. And you know, a lot of people that do freestyle swimming do it for fitness or if they're a triathlete, they do long distance swimming, mm -hmm. you know, open water. And the kick, sometimes you hear it's very important, sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. What's your take on the kick? I know you said you like to keep it nice and tight. Right. How important is the kick as far as it being a propulsive force or is it more of a balancing force? Well, for your better swimmers, your pool swimmers, uh, like in the Olympics, they're going to depend on their kick a lot more. For a triathlete, you're looking at swimming or biking and running after your swim. So you really kind of have to save your legs. It's still good in practice to, to work on some kicking, but for now, just keeping them tight, I like to say, is very streamlined and not putting a lot of energy into them, definitely in your race, some in training. Okay. All right, well now that we've talked a little bit about the general overview, the big picture of freestyle swimming, let's go into breaking down the components and talk about specific drills that you recommend that people do to help them become better at each individual component of the freestyle stroke. Uh, and let's start with body position. Right. Well, body position, I think, is important to have your fore-aft balance. You're looking at your head and your feet. You want them both to be equal distance submerged from the surface. 
So what that means is if you have a drill where you're isolating those two things, I like to do a, a face down kicking drill where the swimmer is merely just looking at the bottom, hands at the side, taking those tight kicks. You can concentrate on keeping that neutral head position. You can concentrate on keeping a nice tight kick back there and just going through the surface of the water. When you breathe on this drill, you just pick your head up like you're sighting, you look straight ahead, and then that causes the swimmer to fight to get that good fore aft balance back. And look at the bottom almost and continue with the kicking, continue with the drill. What's another drill for body? Another good drill is the 636 drill. This is where the swimmer is going to actually stop on the one side, the right side for example, with that bottom arm fully extended, hips perpendicular to the bottom of the pool, keeping that nice tight kick again, take six kicks or six counts, then take three arm pulls, stop on the other side for that arm extension, the six kicks on that side. You hear a lot about gliding in freestyle and reducing your stroke count. A lot of that has to do with your hand entry, how you position your body in the water, and then the pool. And I know that a very popular drill is the catch-up drill for that. Can you Correct. explain that to us? Yeah, the catch-up drill is really useful. You can use that for a timing drill, but you can also use it for a swimmer to help them get used to holding that arm out there and getting that reach. In the catch-up drill, you're gonna have a swimmer go through a full stroke cycle and have their other hand join up with that hand in the front. At first when you do this, it's nice to actually have the swimmer touch, but I also like to use that later, once the swimmers develop that skill, to have a hand placement and streamlining drill. Okay. Now when the hand's underwater, you want to take advantage, full advantage, of maximum surface area of the hand and the arm. I believe the fist drill is a really good drill to help um, focus on that aspect. How do you do the fist drill? Correct. Well, the fist drill is simply making a fist and swimming just like you would in the regular stroke, but with that closed off fist. That's going to reduce the surface area of the hand and cause the swimmer to use more forearm. Because well, again, what we want to do is keep that high elbow position and having a fist going through the full stroke cycle depends on having the swimmer catch with the forearm. Okay. So then towards the end of the stroke, the completion phase, a lot of freestyle swimmers and triathletes tend to pull their hand out too soon. They don't get that full propulsion. Right. What's a good drill to really maximize that final part of the stroke? The final part of the stroke, I think, uh, I, I like a drill that I've heard a uh, famous swim coach call crack into the whip. That's a concept. And what it means is you're going to take that hand and really move it at the fastest acceleration of the stroke past the hip. You still get that nice reach out front, get those fingertips pointed down, but then you incorporate the whole body with the hips and the hand out the back. We called it an outback drill back when I was coaching, uh, which emphasizes purely that finish of the stroke. And also, I guess you could hit your thumb to your thigh just as a reminder yeah. that you are completing your stroke all the way. Definitely. You get that sensory input. You feel that uh, thumb breeze by your thigh, and you know it's down there. You know you're going through those full stroke cycles. And finally, there's the all-important recovery phase of the stroke. Again, I think that uh, probably a really key drill is called the fingertip drag. What's the best way to perform that? Can you go through that particular drill with us? Definitely. The fingertip drag drill really helps if you're getting those high elbows over the water. It's where the, the swimmer is actually going to use their fingertips and drag them over the surface of the water. If your fingers are touching and your arm is bent, you know that the elbow is going to be higher than the hand. That's the desired effect we want. And further, we'd want to make sure that the hand comes straight across. We don't want to swing out. That causes energy to go out. And then at the front, where you should be entering nice and streamlined, it's going to create splashing and turbulence and also throw energy away. It's really good to keep it simple. Come straight forward, dive the hand in, and reach right to where you want to go, whether that's the wall or a buoy in the open water. That's where you want to be. Right, okay, and, and having a, a flat recovery kind of causes you to fishtail, which Correct. creates more drag. Yeah, that just correct? that arm motion. It's too much of an arc where you throw too much energy away and not just simplify it, keeping it where you want to go. Okay, finally, let's talk about breathing. There's two different schools of thought, bilateral breathing versus breathing with every stroke. What's your take on it? Well, I think bilateral breathing and training is really good. 
It creates a symmetry in the stroke. You don't get too lopsided with the stroke like you can if you only breathe on one side. However, in a race, a longer distance, you might take six to eight breaths on one side, but from training bilaterally in practice, you're feeling comfortable and you can breathe on the other side for six to eight strokes. That way you're getting that every stroke cycle breathing, which is really pretty, uh, pretty good. Because it also creates balance, better symmetry in it. Better symmetry and better sighting too. Well, Dave, thank you very much. Thanks very much, really Troy. I appreciate your help. Thank you for joining us for this special feature on proper freestyle swim technique. For more information, please visit my website at www.coachtroy.com. Until we train together next time, train safe and train smart.